Greetings YouTube. Today I'm going to talk about the movie Garden State. Written, directed, and starring Zach Braff as our main character of Andrew Largeman. Now this is a pretty sweet deal for Zach Braff. Not only does he get to do his first film, write his first film, star in his first film, he writes himself a role opposite Natalie Portman, which is a pretty good first directorial choice, if I may so say so myself. I'm a fan of Natalie Portman. I quite like her. I loved her in V for Vendetta. Um, and I found Zach Braff very entertaining in the uh, television series Scrubs. I've watched 1 through 7. We have 1 through 7 on DVD. We don't have season 8 yet. I'd like to get that from my wife. She's a major Scrubs fan. I've enjoyed them, but they're really important to her. Um, and he's quite good in that series, and I think that really translated well. His his the polish that he acquired from that many years of doing a sitcom really translated into this film um, for me. Now, the main, uh, their main character, Andrew Largeman, Large, uh, as he's nicknamed, uh, is a man who's sleepwalking through life. A semi-successful television actor, part-time waiter, um, and he's just kind of in limbo. His family raised him to, like, not deal with things well. Denial is a major coping mechanism used by this family. And his father's a psychiatrist and has provided Large with a extensive list of chemicals to help him deal with any of those pesky emotions, you know, that he just would like to keep them at a distance. So he's pretty much in a chemical haze all the time. And then his mother passes away. And that begins his journey, both physically back to New Jersey where his family lives, and his journey forward into life. I think in some ways you could say that, while she's never on screen, his mother gives birth to, to the character of Andrew Largeman twice. Once, literally. And second, through the process of her death, and finally his ability to mourn and feel genuine emotions, and become a functioning adult. And once he returns to New Jersey, we meet a wonderful cast of interesting and quirky characters. Now, quirky characters can be sometimes a, prob a problem, all right? Because they can be so weird, so off the wall, that they detract from the film. But these characters, while quirky, are, to, at least to me, real enough that I believe they could exist. I've known people and know people today who are equally as quirky, or even more so, than the characters in this movie. For example, he has a good friend who made it big by selling silent Velcro, something that doesn't actually exist in the real world, but would be a really big seller if it did. And another friend of his, who's even a worse state of limbo than he is. He does a lot of drugs, he lives at home with his mom, he's a grave digger and a grave robber. His life is going nowhere, and going nowhere fast. Now, over the course of the film, he encounters Sam, played by Natalie Portman. And that's the only character, the only name she has in the entire film, which I thought was kind of charming. And the two of them are both damaged goods. They're from the bruised bin. And they finally begin to get closer and closer, until they finally make a connection. And the two of them begin to realize that each has something to offer the other. And over the course of the film, you really begin to see Large's character become bigger, become more colorful, literally. His opening scene in this film, he's completely washed out in a white bed. It was very well done. Nice crane shot right down. Um, and I'll admit that Sam, Emily Portman's character, isn't the deepest character in the world. In fact, I have heard often, would often heard the phrase manic pixie dream girl used to refer to this character and I would have to say that she just may be the ultimate expression of that phrase. And a manic pixie dream girl is that quintessential perfect woman to bring out the real human being in some kind of thoughtful damaged character. It's used as a foil, as an impetus, as, as, as a catalyst for the main male character to become a better human being. So she herself does not necessarily have to be all that deep or complex because she's just there to help the other character develop. 
And this character in this film is a really good example of that. Now, it's a, it's a, it's a nice film. I think the cover, what the cover says, Marvelous, fun, hilarious, and heartfelt. I would say it's marvelous, fun, and heartfelt. Humorous, I would not say hilarious. But that isn't what did it for me. What did it for me was the final scene. Now, I'm going to spoil this, so if you haven't seen it and you want to see it, go and somewhere else. Don't listen to the end of this. But in the final scene, he's departing to go back to his home in L.A. And they're having this gut-wrenching parting. They're in tears. They're sitting together on the stairs in the airport, you know, and she's, no, oh, it'll be okay, I'll call you when I get home and everything. And the character of Andrew Largeman has created this perfect dramatic scene. Not Zach Braff, not the director, not the actor. The character within the movie has created this dramatic scene for himself. Because he has convinced himself, this is what you do. This is what society wants. This is what his negative patterns want him to do. Make this heartfelt parting and then go back home. And then probably continue the crappy, dead life he had back then. And he gets on that plane. And the scene cuts to Natalie Portman's character, Sam, in a phone booth. And she's in hysterics. She's falling apart. And then Zach Braff's character, Large, opens that door. And she's like, what are you doing here? And for the first time in this film, he's broken the script. Not the script of the movie, but Large has broken the script of his life. He's now in new territory. He's decided, I am a genuine human being. I have wants and needs and desires, and they are valid. And I will not go through some stupid pantomime of life just because it's dramatic. That's because it's what society or my negative thoughts think I should do. And yes, if you're wondering why this scene resonates with me so well, it's because I've done it more times than I care to remember. Or I've walked away, or I've let someone else walk away, or let some activity I was involved with leave me. Because I thought it was the dramatic scene that needed to be made. And now I finally learned that you can break that script and you can go off on your own and you can be the commander of your own life. And no film I have ever seen captured that moment as well as this. So I recommend this film. It's a delightful film. The commentary track with Zach Braff and Natalie Comportman is excellent. There's another one on there with uh, Zach, Braff and, uh, Zach Braff and uh, some of the technical people that, that, that he worked with. I haven't listened to that one yet. Um, but it's worth your time. It's an entertaining film on its own. And for me, at least, it delivers a message that I think lots of people need to hear.